Hey everyone, Christian here. Another palm review. I know, shocking. But this one is um, Bredeocantia dumasii. <clears throat> this is a New Caledonian uh, rarity. And as you can see, it actually has a new red leaf, reddish leaf. It's more of a crimson color. Um, and it's kind of held that for uh, a while now, which is nice. So uh, usually with red leaves, they may only hold it for a few days. They may be dark, but only hold it for a few days, or they may be very light and hold it for a long time and it really depends on your personal preference i prefer the leaf to be, hold a color for a longer time than the actual color itself so um anyway uh this palm is from new caledonia and like most new caledonian palms it has very leathery uh, leaflets on it and the new caledonian palms are unique in that they kind of all share a lot of characteristics uh they have very thick leaflets for one they're, uh, they have kind of bulbous crown shafts. And you can see it kind of bulges out here at the base. Uh, there's some new potting mix in here. And um, it kind of has this very tightly wrapped, uh, the petiole base is kind of like, they don't want to come off at all. And uh, unlike uh, the crowns of like, say a Christmas palm that will come off and eventually just kind of die off, these kind of hold themselves. And because of their uh, durability. They're also quite uh, cold tolerant as well, and they're tolerant to other forms of, uh, you know, they're they're relatively drought tolerant. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, you know, put them in desert-like conditions, but they will. They, they're not. They're, they won't dry out if you don't water them for a couple of days. So this is uh, Bredeocantia is uh, a genera, a genus, I should say, with four species. Uh, there is um, Bredeocantia hapala, is definitely the most common. Bredeocantia viardii, which is a little bit um, less common. It's a little bit harder to grow in hotter uh, subtropic climates. Then you have uh, Bredeocantia uh, dumasii and Grandiflora, which are a little bit rarer. And um, Dumasii does pretty well here. Grandiflora actually does a little bit better. But this is a decent size. It's in a 15 gallon and it probably is a, you know, in a little while it could probably go up. So uh, this is also probably five to six years old, so it isn't the fastest growing plant like most New Caledonian palms. The, the most famous New Caledonian um, palm is uh, the flamethrower palm, Chamberonia. And as you, if you look at it closely, you'll see it has those very dark green leaflets. And that's very typical throughout, like I said, throughout the island. And most of these palms do grow at elevation. And the more elevation they have, uh, it tends to be the more leathery the leaflet is, the more the thicker it is. There's, um, I'll get into the other varieties uh, as I uh, find good specimens of them. So uh, the seed on this is going to be uh, like a little walnut, I should say. It's kind of a pain to germinate. It's not the easiest uh, germination. I'd say uh, one out of one to ten difficulty level, it's probably close to a seven or eight. It doesn't like really hot weather. New Caledonian seeds, seeds from palms of New Caledonia are going to be harder in general to uh to germinate they don't new caledonia is not it's even though it's in the tropics it's not a very hot tropical country it kind of um the temperature kind of stays pretty mild it's moderated just by uh, the fact that it's a smaller island it's not very close to the equator and it uh it gets kind of a lot of uh a lot of cloudiness and just maritime influence i guess is the best way um, so, you know, you're at, it's going to be in the 80s, lows in the upper 60s, where it's not going to be 90 every day uh, in the country. So um, that, that kind of contributes to the cold hardiness of the, of, of the plants that do come from there. There really aren't any cold, uh, sensitive plants from New Caledonia. So getting back to the Bredeocantia, excuse me as I drink my seltzer, um, it, I would say it is a 9B plant, as are most um, plants from the island. Uh, Kentiopsis, um, Chamberonia, Bredeocentia, uh, Basilinia, and uh, other rare uh, genera. Um, and so that, they actually do very well in California. And other they do, these do well in uh, Mediterranean climates as well, where you know, you're not going to get away with a Christmas palm, an adnidia in um in, in a Mediterranean climate. I mean, you can, you can try, but uh, the, these are actually pretty, these are going to be much better substitutes, even though they are going to be a little bit pricier and a little bit slower. In the end, you're going to have a much nicer, much, I don't say nicer, just a more unique plant. Not more unique, but just, you're going to have a unique plant. So, 
uh, sorry, my tripod's a little bit off center there, but um, anyway, yeah, they if you want to try and germinate the seed, it is available. Uh, it's not terribly cheap, and it will even though if you give it the um, the, the 80 to 90, 80 to 85, I should say, like 25 Celsius or 30 Celsius, uh, whether it's going to take three months or so before you're going to get, uh, you know, one to two leaf seedlings, or even a one leaf seedling, I should say. But um, yeah, it, it, the crown shaft turns into a nice uh, kind of striped base. It's kind of, it kind of has this darker brown about it, and uh, it really turns into a beautiful plant. I wish I had, there was a larger one to show but these are relatively new to cultivation and this is one of the older plants there are some bigger ones but uh, this is the largest one that i have access to at the time so um yeah that's about it for Bredio kentia dumasii and uh yeah if it, this was if you have any more questions about Bredio kentia other new caledonian palms leave them down below if you enjoyed the video give it a thumbs up and if you have and if you're new to the channel go ahead and subscribe and you'll see many more palm uh, videos like this and have a nice day.